Spooky month is upon us. That means spooky videos, games, and of course, literature. More specifically, creepypastas. I like creepypastas. I still remember the first time I listened to Squidward Suicide thinking, it's Spongebob, it can't be that scary. I was around 10 to 12 at the time and wow. Also it got referenced in like an actual episode of Spongebob, what the heck. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about gaming creepypastas and their impact on gaming as a whole. So let's get started. Arguably one of the biggest gaming creepypastas around has to be Herobrine, the mysterious no pupiled clone of Minecraft Steve. For those who don't know, Herobrine started its life as this screenshot, with a short story attached saying how the player started a single player world and began to see a mysterious other figure in this convenient dense fog. As time goes on, they also notice changes to the world which appeared to be man-made. Also, he was not just dead brother. I thought that bit was a bit stupid, but hey. Through the years, it kind of snowballed into something much bigger with summoning techniques, clickbait, and mods. Notch himself got involved by adding removed hero Brian to patch notes, and even managed to sneak his way into official Minecon art. I think the reason this creepypast was so successful was that it played with your sense of security. The idea that someone was watching you while you were just playing in a single player world, just out of you, was very creepy, and while I never experienced any spooky Herobrine experiences myself, I enjoy the idea of Herobrine. The cherry on the spooky cake is that we'll never truly know who made Herobrine. The first mention of him was on a anonymous 4chan post about a decade ago. And if someone was to come forward today, who would believe them? But they know who they are. They know. <laughs> Another classic. The thing that set this apart from the others was that it had video evidence. So it must be true. Joking aside, if you saw something like this and someone told you it was due to a possessed cartridge, it was hard not to believe them. This was before things like modding, especially N64 games, was mainstream. Even watching this now, knowing it's fake, it's still got an eerie vibe to it. While I don't have too much to say about this one story-wise, I was never too much of a fan, I gotta respect it for its impact on creepypastas themselves, and the lack of use of blood and gore to make the story spooky. It let the spookiness do its work, and it did just that. It worked. The last thing I really have to say about this is that it's being updated again. The creators started uploading new Ben Drowned content to their YouTube channel, so if you're interested, go check that out. Okay, so this one's a bit of a cheat, as it isn't just one creepypasta in particular. There are a couple that I wanted to cover, and I'm writing the script, so I get to pick the rules. Hmm. It's not too much of a wonder why Lavender Town became Creepypasta Central a few years ago. You go from happy times with Pokemon, gotta catch them all, to a ghost infested town where, instead of talking about how bug Pokemon are the best before a battle, they ask for your blood. Oh, and that soundtrack, that infamous soundtrack, it just sounds depressing and mysterious, much like the town itself. And so was born Lavender Town Syndrome, a creepypasta claiming that the theme caused actual suicides and depression in children. Wouldn't be the first time Pokemon caused kids physical pain. The song basically became the gloomy Sunday of the video game world. If you're interested in this one, I highly recommend this video by Daryl Talks Games. It goes into the social aspect of it, and how this myth actually began to affect people in real ways. Seriously, check it out. The next one I wanted to cover is Buried Alive. This one is about an original final boss of the Pokemon Tower called, you guessed it, Buried Alive. It takes the form of a decaying human reaching out from the ground. When initiating battle, he says, oh, I'm lonely. So very lonely. I'm 
want you to join it? The weird thing is, no programming exists for if you beat Buried Alive. So, if you were to do it, the game would just freeze. However, if you lost, he would say, Finally. And the game would show this sprite before it crashed. Spooky. Personally, that's one of my favourite creepypastas. And while it's probably nostalgia talking, I like the fact that it talks about it objectively. Not, oh, I bought this game at a haunted yard sale. It makes it so much better, in my opinion. And, I mean, it sounds like something you'd read on the cutting room floor. And as someone who's obsessed with that sort of thing, I love this creepypasta. Lavender Town has had an undeniable effect on the video game scene, and an even bigger effect on the creepypasta scene. But not as much as this next one. Okay, okay, I know this one's a bit of a meme at this point, I agree but it's had a massive effect on creepypasta and video game culture. Think about how many .exe games there are now. All of them stemmed from this, or something very similar, that probably stemmed from this. It's set a lot of the now cliches that are commonplace now, like hyper-realistic blood and strangely specific times, but it's still an alright creepypasta and was even better for the time. And hey, I'm sure many a game dev started out by making a .exe game. Heck, the guy who made Sonic.exe and Sally.exe is making something completely original, so go check that out. I'm sure he's not the only one who ended up doing something like this. It's a form of fan art, and that's as valuable as anything original. So that's it. That's my list of creepypastas that impacted video games as a whole. I think that video games have been affected by creepypasta culture and will continue to be impacted by it. Now we're getting things like Petscop, which are a weird blend of creepypasta and actual video game. Are there any ones I missed? Or did you just really like the video? Please let me know. I'd love to do more of this sort of creepypasta content since there are a ton of creepypastas I love but just didn't fit into this video. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video, as of writing, we are like two subscribers away from hitting a thousand, so we may have already hit that by the time this video comes out. Okay, so like a day after I recorded the audio for this, we actually hit a thousand subscribers. Thanks so much for that. Um, I'm hoping to do some behind the scenes like stuff. Uh, as a celebration, so please tell me if you'd be interested in that. Might even see some stuff from this video. Who knows? Alright, uh, well, I'll have a video about that soon, like a proper announcement. Uh, thank you 